this opportunity with great uh, interest. Um, teamwork is critical, um, you know, understanding the roles of every player, um, being flexible, because the truth is that so there are changed circumstances through the life of this particular project. Uh, no development ends up as it's first envisaged, and there's got to be flexibility. And finally, and as a point that was mentioned earlier, energy. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you've got to, you know, these, these developments take vision, uh, time, commitment, but staying power uh, is something that I think uh, those players that are going to be involved in this to drive it forward are all going to have, have to have. Yeah, staying power. Hmm. Yes, I know what you mean by that. Um. <laughs> Danny. Um, I don't know, I've got two or three things, I think. Um, in, in most of these projects that we work on, um, doesn't matter where you are, most of them actually, you wouldn't know where you are in the world. They have a very similar feel. Um, and, and you know, they're kind of tall glass buildings and you walk down these canyons of very windy streets, you know, and have a um, pretty soulless uh, feel about them. Um, and so I, th I think actually, I, I liked what Richard was talking about and, and this kind of agile development, the reuse of existing buildings, you know, there's, there's numerous academic uh, treaties on uh, new ideas come out of old buildings. Hmm. So I think um, the, the way that this development happens is going to be really important. Um, I, I do think that uh, you also have to be, uh, the brand is really important. Um, you have to stand for something. And, and here, I think there's kind of three components already in place. You know, it's, it's London. It is, you know, the global media city, I think, still, and, and should remain that way. The BBC is, is, is a global brand, and no matter how much criticism it might get in the UK, when you go abroad, people think it is fantastic, and it is. Uh, and then we also have, you know, the iPlayer came out of here. So, when working in, in trying to take um, major market-making companies into some of these media cities elsewhere, they always ask you three questions. What is it that you are specifically world-class at? Now, um, in 2454, for example, I think there's a really easy answer to that. It's Arabic content developed by Arabs for Arabs. That's easy to get your head around that. And so Nokia and Ericsson have already signed up to actually take space there. Uh, Media City UK, of which I'm a, 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 a kind of a supporter, has not got that message clearly to the world yet. And it hasn't been successful in securing any of these major market making companies. So I think that that, that branding issue is really, really important. And then I think, uh, I'm going to take a third one, really, I, th I think what's uh, essential, really, is that the feel of the place is right, you know, it, it shouldn't feel like a business park stuck on the edge of town, mm -hmm. um, you know, it should have the feel of being a marketplace, the activities going on, people do stuff, they talk to each other, uh, they want to be there, it's an exciting place. So they, 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 we need much better design from the architectural community as well. I think we need something more than just better design. I think that's important. Because uh, to achieve the, uh, the granularity of the sort of situation you're talking about, where there's old and new, small and large, cheap and expensive, deluxe and uh, not so deluxe next door to each other, means changing the rules of development, basically, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it does. I think we need much more agile development. I think we need much more bravery uh, and, and probably a different legislative uh, environment as well. So that should be pretty easy. Work well, for the lawyers. <laughs> yeah. Tim, Thanks, what have you learned from today? Um, I was going to come back a little to the, the people aspect, actually. The, um, the title of this particular uh, talking aspect is around infrastructure, transport, technology, space. Uh, I think we've missed off a rather important one there, which was people. Uh, I was very intrigued by the um, images that were being put up on screen and uh, that mention of, well, when we uh, create those lovely sort of design pictures and we render them and it's got lots of people there interacting and having fun and all being very happy in this new wonderful space that's being designed, 
And then in reality, for some of them, uh, there's actually nobody there at all. There's just not one individual to be seen. I think it's hugely important that we take into account uh, the sort of the people aspect around all of this. We can put all of these infrastructures in place, the transport, the space, the technology, but without uh, making sure that we are working with people to create these spaces. And you know, some of the, the conversations that came out um, from, uh, you know, from, from Stephen Greenland, which was around that sense of, you know, we need to be having these dialogue with, with communities so that we take them with us, I think is hugely important. So that was one part, I think, for, for me, which I found very interesting. Like the second point, which is just to come back to some of the aspects around um, creative, you know, what, what is creativity and, and innovation? Um, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of our clients are, are asking uh, for that innovation from from, from us, uh, as well as you know talking about it from themselves. We, you know, we want to be more creative, more innovative. We'd like to have environments that are going to help us do that. Uh, and I, I remember having a, a conversation with one um, business leader not not that long ago, where having expressed this this idea of wanting to be to be more creative and more innovative, so I thought, that's absolutely terrific. You know, what is it that that's that's going to look like? Um, you know, when it's all finished, you, you're moving in on, on sort of day one into this new space, yeah, that's terrific. Um, so can you just sort of describe to me what the sort of creative in, atmosphere and environment looks like? Uh, and he said, well, it's a really good question. Um, it, it'll look very different uh, to what we have now, uh, because people will be doing things very, very differently. And I said, that, that's, that's, that's great. In what sort of way, way different? <laughs> um, well, uh, that very different, uh, very different to now. You can see where that conversation kind of went. But it's this sense of, you know, we're, we're spending a lot of money, time, effort, resource, uh, and that's if we can have people that will go through sort of a lifetime of projects like this. Are we really clear about what it is that, that it's going to look like at, at the end of this? I had a quick chat with Chris Kane during the, one of the sessions, and okay, the BBC has a sort of a scorecard approach to understanding what that success looks like. And from Imperial College as well, a sense of being quite clear. But I think it's useful to be able to articulate clearly, uh, sort of demonstrate ably what, what is it that we're, we're trying to achieve out of it. Because one client said me very recently when I was talking about a whole aspect of this sort of creativity and innovation. Uh, their response, which is maybe slightly contentious for today, was, oh, yes, that sense of innovation. Well, I never really understood quite what that looks like. And frankly, if I can't measure it, I'm, I'm not really that interested. Um, so I think it's just about being clear what is it that we're after. Can you suggest a, a describe a non-creative place? Well, actually, I think it's a really, it's a really interesting question, though, because as I say, I think that from most organisations, we're looking at being more creative in, in what we do, whether that's doing things quicker, better, smarter, faster, fewer people. Um, it is about trying to, to look at the way that we do things in a, in a different way. But to be honest, no, I think pretty much most of the organisations that people work in, to a certain degree, we all have to be creative in what we do. That's what we're about, particularly in, in knowledge sector work. Mm -hmm. It's not just about advertising agencies and coming up with a new slogan or a new whatever. You know, all of us in what we do try and be creative in what we do every day. OK, well, thank you for that. Uh, response panel. Um, perhaps the more serious question of the two. Um, Can I say something? Oh, Carla, <laughs> I'm so sorry. sorry. I knew <laughs> I'd do that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's okay. It, it's, I'm quite it doesn't, patient doesn't have to be on purpose, <laughs> it just happens. <laughs> no, uh, uh, there's a couple of things that I'd like to pick up on from today because I think they were really important. The first question today was why West London? Why do, why do you need to move the Creative Center West? And um, I'd like to make an analogy to that. I mean, over 25 years ago, London had a thriving financial center in the city of London. And everybody said, we have a, f a financial center. And as uh, Andrew Gould alluded to today, um, if it wasn't for the creation of Canary Wharf, London would never have become the financial center it has become. And in an article I saw about two years ago, it actually not only rivaled New York, but passed New York as a world financial center. And I think the same thing is happening in the West End. It's a wonderful place to work, and it does not have the capacity to grow in the way that London needs to grow if it is going to become uh, a major creative community um, for all kinds of creative processes. So I think it's, it's and um, there's something that happens when you start talking